this statement has no proof. If you can prove that statement is true, then you have a contradiction. On the other hand, the only way to show that it's false is to prove that it's true. Another contradiction. So you have to leave it alone. I am imagining, of course, that the statement, that difficult statement is written out in symbolic logic, which has certain initial assumptions and rules. In order to avoid that contradiction, being able to prove a statement that says it doesn't have a proof, you have to go back to your initial assumptions and remove one or two or three of them, so you don't have a complete list. This was called Goodell's incompleteness theorem. In other words, in any scheme, any theory that you set up, your initial assumptions have to be incomplete. Because if you have a complete list, by that I mean a list that will let you prove anything, it will be the undoing of the whole system. The whole thing will fall down. But then if you're missing some assumptions in the first place, it means that the totality of reality is not knowable. You can never know all the truth. All of the truth is not solvable or soluble. Logic is a solvent, but we need a bottle to keep it in. We need something that it won't dissolve in order to keep the universe making sense. The root meaning of absolute means that which is not dissolved, absolute. Reality, seen through logic, scientific inquiry, is something like looking at an item with a magnifying glass. As you move the glass closer, the image gets bigger and clearer, and you see more details, but you reach a certain point where it's a, as fine a picture as you're going to get, because if you move any closer, the image is distorted, and you, you've lost it. So, to go back with where I started, la ilaha illallah, or the assumption that the universe makes sense, is exactly the same. It's all tied in with the assumption that there is an absolute, there is something that isn't knowable. If the universe makes sense to you, you are at the same time saying there is some item that I do not have a hold on, that is outside of what I do know. You have to admit that in order for your universe to make sense. The other uh, theorem of Goodell concerns consistency, and here we need to think about how it is we think. I hope I don't lose you here. If A and B stand for statements, this means that A implies B. Suppose A is the statement, it is night, and B is the statement, it is cold. And this statement is saying, if it is night, then it is cold. All right? The way we think is according to the rule of detachment, which says that if this statement is true, and this statement is true, then B is true. That's how we think. In other words, if it is true that when it is night, it is cold, and if it is true that it is night, well, then it's cold. That's how we think. That's the rule of detachment. This statement, this is a statement A, say it is night. This is the opposite, not A, it is day. This whole statement here, not A implies that A implies B, is what is called a tautology. Now, a tautology is something that is true no matter what the values of A and B are. In other words, that statement on the right there is true whether or not A is true or B is true, whatever they are. That statement will always be true. You can calculate it out for yourself by considering all the alternatives of putting down, uh, suppose A is true and B is false, then the value of the statement on the right is false, but then A on the left is true uh, or false, and false implies false is a true statement. 
You see, with all possibilities, that statement will always be true, and that's a tautology. Now suppose somebody has a theory that is inconsistent. By inconsistency, we mean when two opposite things are both true. Well, a very funny thing happens. If you want to admit to your scheme of reasoning an inconsistency, the two opposite things are both true. Because if you do that, you can prove that anything is true. We know that this thing is true, always true. Suppose this one, not A, is true. Since not A is true, we can detach it. And we're left with this statement. A implies B, and it is true. That is the rule of detachment. That when this is true, and this is true, we can detach that, and this is true. Now, since this is true, and our friend with the inconsistent theory says, not A is true, but A is true also. The opposite. It's true also. That means we can detach A. A is true. Then we have proved that B is true. You see? The danger being, then, if you have a theory that's inconsistent, a theory that contains two opposite things and they're both held to be true, you can use it that way and prove anything is true. If you believe that it is night and it's day two, then you can prove that giraffes are born with two heads. Because those are the rules. The point of it is, first of all, to advise you that's the danger of an inconsistent theory. A person can use it to prove anything. But the point is, if you have a theory and you want to know if it's consistent, there's one way to find out. That's to produce a statement that has no proof. Because if the theory was inconsistent, you could have proved it. If you come up with a, theory, a, a statement that has no proof, it meant, well, there's no inconsistencies in your system because there no, there's no way I could juggle a proof out of this thing. This is why a man cannot consistently build a case that there is no absolute. Plenty of people say that. It's a way of life to a lot of people. They say all things are relative. If they try to build a consistent logical case to demonstrate to you that all things are relative, they can't do it. Because when something is consistent, you have to have an absolute in the system. It also explains why the absolute must be ineffable, unknowable, because this absolute that you're talking about, which is a necessary item in any scheme of thinking, has to be, by definition, something that isn't defined in your system. It's outside your system. You can't know it. So then the beginning of wisdom, to this Muslim and to many, I trust, is the discerning between those things that are relative and that which is absolute. The intelligent man is the man that knows the difference between something that really only depends on something else and something that depends on nothing else. If a man puts his faith in money or fame or some other item, he's fooling himself if he doesn't stop to think, wait a minute, money. But money depends on certain other things. Uh, the economy of the, the country, which depends in turn upon the state of uh, peace worldwide, etc., etc. He's put his faith in a relative thing. The man whose faith is in the absolute isn't subject to wavering and change because nothing affects the absolute. It doesn't depend on something else, how things are going. The certainty of la ilaha illallah, this certainty that there is no God but the one God, is the same as the assumption that things do make sense, there is an absolute, is a certainty that resides in here. It's in the intellect. 